Remember the headlines, the press conferences, the we're taking a stand speeches? The U.S. government basically said, hey, China, you know those super smart AI chips? You're not getting those anymore. It was supposed to be a checkmate. No chips, no progress, no threat. Simple, right? <sighs> Except, uh, here we are. And China's not just still in the game, they're building their own pieces. Well, sort of. Let's talk about the Xiaomi X-Ring 01. It's a not just a phone chip. It's a statement, a flex. Xiaomi basically saying, look, we can play this game too. And with that neural engine, it's doing a lot of what those restricted chips can do. Not everything, but enough to make you question if the whole ban the good stuff strategy was really going to work. If you're into this kind of story, tech, power, a little bit of global drama, go ahead and hit like or subscribe or drop a comment. Or just keep watching. I mean, you're already here. All right, so the X-Ring 01. It's not the first chip China's made, but it's the first one from Xiaomi that's really trying to play in the big leagues. And the timing? Not a coincidence. You don't spend four years and almost two billion dollars on a chip just because you're bored. You do it because you want to prove something. To yourself, to your country, to the world. And look, I know what you're thinking. Okay, but is it any good? <laughs> yeah, it's annoyingly good. Like, wait, how did you do that good? It's made using TSMC's 3 nanometer tech, the same stuff powering the world's top chips. 10 CPU cores, a beefy GPU, and a neural engine that can handle most of the AI magic you see in today's flagship phones. And when you look at the benchmarks, it's right up there with the latest Snapdragon and Dimensity chips. Sometimes it even edges them out. Let's talk numbers, because this is where things get awkward for anyone who thought the sanctions would slow China down. On Geekbench 6, the X-Ring 01 score is about 3,119 single-core and 9,673 multi-core. For comparison, the Snapdragon 8 Elite is around 3,089 and 9,405, and the Dimensity 9400 is at 2,748 and 8,574. So yeah, Xiaomi's right in the mix. On Antutu, the X-Ring 01 hits around 3 million points. That's not just impressive for a first try, that's, wait, you're actually serious about this? Territory. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 is in the same range, and the Dimensity 9400 trails a bit. But of course, it's not just about raw numbers. Let's talk about what's actually inside this thing. The CPU setup is wild. 10 cores in a 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2 layout. 2 Cortex-X925s at 3.9 GHz, 4 A725s at 3.4 GHz, 2 more A725s at 1.9 GHz, and 2 A520s at 1.8 GHz. <sighs> yeah, it's a lot. But basically, it's a mix of big, medium, and small cores, all working together, so your phone can handle anything without turning into a pocket heater. The GPU? It's a 16-core ARM Immortalis G925. That's a mouthful, but what it means is, Games look good, videos run smooth, and your phone can handle whatever graphics you throw at it. In OpenCL tests, the X-Ring 01's GPU actually beats the Snapdragon's Adreno 830, 21,789 versus 19,224. Vulcan scores are close too. So, if you're the kind of person who cares about frame rates, this chip is not going to let you down. And the neural engine, six cores, 44 trillion operations per second. That's a ton of power. For context, that 44 TOPS is neck and neck with Apple's A18 Pro at 40 TOPS and Snapdragon's 8 Elite at 45 TOPS. It's not just keeping up, it's throwing punches in the AI ring, handling on-device tasks like real-time photo editing or language translation faster than you can say, cloud-free. It's what lets your phone handle voice recognition, real-time translation, and all those cool camera effects right on the device. No cloud needed. Stuff that used to need a desktop computer is now just chilling in your pocket, making life a little weirder and a lot more convenient. Of course, it's not all sunshine and silicon. The X-Ring 01 has its quirks. The image processor, the part that handles photos and videos, is Xiaomi's own design. It's good, but not quite as sharp as what Qualcomm's been doing for years. Reviewers say it's better than before, but still a step behind the best. So, if you're hoping for the world's best smartphone camera, 
you might want to wait for version 2. <laughs> now, about the modem. This is where things get a bit awkward. The X-Ring01 doesn't have a built-in 5G modem. Instead, it uses an external MediaTek T800 chip. So when you're on 5G, your battery drains faster, about 30 minutes less than a Snapdragon-powered phone. It's a smart workaround, but it shows Xiaomi's still got some catching up to do when it comes to integration. You know what? That's how this stuff starts. You build the first version, it's not perfect, but it works. And then you build the next one, and the next, and pretty soon, you're not just catching up, you're competing, maybe even leading. And that's the part that should make you pay attention. This isn't just about Xiaomi, it's about China. When you try to lock someone out, sometimes they just go and build their own club with their own rules. Let's zoom out for a second. Why does any of this matter? Why should you care about a chip in a phone you might never even see in person? Because this is how the world changes. The US thought it could slow China down by cutting off access to the best chips. And for a while, it worked. Huawei got hit hard. Their phones lost Google. Their chips got stuck at older tech. It looked like the plan was working. But then, China started pouring money into its own chip industry. Billions, tens of billions, factories, research, talent, a whole ecosystem built almost overnight. And now, here comes Xiaomi with a chip that's not just good for a first try. It's good, period. Sure, they still need TSMC in Taiwan to actually manufacture the chip, and that's a whole other can of worms geopolitically. But the fact that Xiaomi can design something this good and get it made, that's huge. If they can do it in a phone chip, how long before they do it in a server chip? Or a chip for self-driving cars? Or, I don't know, a chip for drones? You see where this is going. It's not just about catching up, it's about leapfrogging. About building something new, something different, and maybe, just maybe, something better. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The X-Ring 01 is still a first-gen product. It's only in two devices right now, a phone and a tablet, both only sold in China. It's not taking over the world, yet. Let's talk about the money for a second. Xiaomi spent almost $2 billion making this chip, and they're planning to spend almost $7 billion more over the next decade. That's not a side project. Let's see what happens. That's a moonshot. That's betting the company. And it's not just Xiaomi. The Chinese government is all in on this. They want to be self-sufficient. They want to make their own chips, their own software, their own everything, because they don't want to be at the mercy of someone else's rules. And honestly, that's not just a China thing. Every country wants to be self-sufficient. Nobody likes being told no or having to rely on someone else. So what's next? If history tells us anything, this is just the beginning. The next version will be better. And after that, who knows? Maybe in a few years, the world's best chip won't come from California or Taiwan. Maybe it'll be from Beijing, Shenzhen, or some city you've never even heard of. And then what? Do the rules change again? Does the US try to ban something else? Do we end up with two separate tech worlds, each with their own chips, their own software, their own internet? It's not as far-fetched as it sounds. But for now, let's just sit with this. A year ago, the plan was to keep China out of the AI chip race. Today, they're not just in the race, they're running hard, and they're not alone. So what do you think? Is this just a blip, a clever workaround that'll hit a wall? Or is it the start of something bigger, something that changes the way the world works? Five years from now, are we all using Chinese designed chips without even knowing it? Or does the US pull another trick to stay on top? Tell me your wildest tech predictions. Let's see who's got the crystal ball. Drop your thoughts in the comments. I read them, most of them anyway. If you want to keep up with this story, because it's not going anywhere, hit like, subscribe, all that good stuff. It helps and it lets me know you're out there thinking about this too. Because honestly, this is just the beginning. The world's getting weirder, faster. And the chips, they're only getting smarter. See you in the next one.